Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. This is English Custom Woodworking. Um, today I'm going to be making a video. It's going to be part one of probably a series. I'm not sure how many people will be interested in watching this one. But um, we are going to be turning a front porch um, into a sunroom or a day room. And uh, let me spin you around here. This is what we got basically. I've got a enclosed... Uh, front patio area here, front porch area. It's got a roof over it. It's got a deck underneath it. Um, used to have some just basic screen um, in these openings. Uh, now it doesn't have anything um, where we live. This screened in, what used to be screened in area uh, during the fall and spring a lot of times just becomes completely covered in pollen and dust and it becomes impossible to clean and kind of painstaking so I've taken the screen in and out a few times um but basically have just left it out uh but we've decided that we would like to try to turn this into a sunroom um so we have ordered some windows the windows are on their way um we're going to enclose this entire area i'm going to have to reframe these because the window is going to actually go from up here at this header uh, down to about where that bottom cross member is there. Um, not exactly. I'm going to have to do some reframing. Um, that's what I'm started already in the process here. And do a few other things. So this bottom area along the bottom will be, once we get the windows in, um, it'll be enclosed in with some kind of siding. Haven't decided on any of that yet. Um, I'm going to end up having to pull up all the deck boards um because this is you can see through there that's ground underneath so i want to make this insect proof uh temperature proof so i'm gonna pull all the deck boards up and put some type of uh insulation in and then a subfloor and then i'm not sure if i'll put the deck boards back down or a different kind of flooring i might just put the deck boards back down clean them up put them back down um there is a fence out here I try not to move the camera around too much i apologize I'm trying to make anybody seasick motion sick there's already part of this area has been fenced in to try to keep um, rodents and stuff out um, so i will probably finish that it ends right here so i'll probably finish that all the way around um to try to keep anything out that wants to get underneath the deck um the way it doesn't get up underneath there and gets trapped underneath there. Dead dying things underneath the trap deck that you can't get to. Never end up being a good recipe. Um, and then out, out here on this outside, up in that um, angle, there will be, I'm going to frame one window up there in the top, um, in the middle. So I'm going to reframe all that and make sure that it's still worthy of the weight of the roof, which there's not a lot of weight up there, but... I'm gonna reframe that so I'll have a window up here in the middle. Um, and then in here on the inside, on the ceiling, we are going to insulate up here in between each one of these um, rafters. Um, there's a metal roof on this house. And in the summertime, that uh, sun gets beaten down on that metal and it, it uh, radiates through. It's pretty, it gets pretty warm out here. Uh, that's why we got a fan that fan helps a little bit with the breeze blowing through that's the other thing the screens that we used to have out here um even though you don't think that they would they actually if there's any little breeze at all that screen kind of dampens it quite a bit so the breeze is a whole lot less noticeable so this is a beautiful area where this house is sitting it overlooks this spring out here and uh we want to turn this porch into a um a sunroom enjoy either in the middle of the summer so it's temperature controlled and in the um, in the summertime and the winter time maybe one of these days there's two bay windows here overlooking there's a dining area there on the inside of that area and uh, maybe one of these days we'll figure out a way of taking those windows out and then framing either an open doorway or some kind of doorway there so you can come in and out of the house um there is a door right here then i'm going to put a insulated storm door 
and then there's a doorway right here um, coming from this this angle that I will put an insulated storm door in here it's 36 inches so I've already torn this area out uh, this actually came all the way around I already tore this out before I started filming and I thought well this might actually be a video that I can make somebody might be interested it's gonna be a a few part series because this is going to take uh, a few different steps to do um, but basically we're going to reframe for the windows before I get the windows in I want to figure out the insulation up top um, and then I want to do the flooring insulate and I need to frame that opening up there uh, because once it gets hot and this there's all kinds of wasp and insects and stuff they just love to come up underneath here and make homes you can see some of the some of the remnants but um, I'll video some of this and hopefully somebody's interested in watching and see how it goes. Enjoy. So I didn't record this yesterday. So that one window done. So what I did these every single one of these windows is the same height. Um, but I'm lowering the height from what used to be the sill down to here. And that's going to give me a larger um, glass view on each window. So each window height is 64. Um, I actually brought the top uh, plate down one two by four. So I'm taking all these out, this one here, and redoing the structure, but I'm saving it. So I'm trying to be kind of uh, picky when I take these things apart uh, to save it because I'm going to reuse it. It's going to save me a lot of wood. Um, I also did some math, and the reason I brought this down just inch and a half with one uh, two by four is because now when I make my um, window kickers here on each side that are 64 I can do with two 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 by fours I can do each side and I can cut um, the supports down here out of one two by four so that's gonna save me some two by fours and Main reason being because the two by fours are so expensive. Everything's so expensive right now. So I'm just trying to be cost effective with everything I'm doing. And then I also, it's gonna be hard to see looking into the sun, um, but I framed this in. I had a support that was, you can see here the end. I cut this off because it was gonna be in my way. But before I did that, I put this support in here to support the distance between the rafters. That's really all that's doing. And same thing here, one on each side. So I had just one here, but I added two. And then I had the end gable support two by four, which was bowed like crazy. So I cut it out and I framed in uh, this window, which there was a little bit of a lip here from your end gable um, truss so made that all happen this is a 512 pitch um, if you guys can see up there what all I did and then frame that in so this is going to be a 36 by 36 window and it's mainly going to be used for extra light and then also um, these are all double hung windows so I can open them up for any heat that gathers up here in this space um, I can open those windows or this window up here to let a lot of the heat out so here's an outside view of what I did up on top I'm going to sheathe all this out here and I'll have to put nailers up along this top edge just because of the way they made it to help with my sheeting. I don't have to, but it'll give a little support. That way um, you won't be able to kind of push that top edge in. Probably won't mean much, but when you're only putting half inch sheeting, a little bit goes an extra mile sometimes.
Here's the windows. I got them in yesterday. This one here is 36 by 36, and every single one of these is different. Um, I actually had to go through yesterday evening. I got them all marked, um, inventoried, so I know exactly which hole they go in. But there's nine large windows, 64 inches height. They're all around anywhere from 39 to 42, 43 inches wide. And then this is 36 by 36. These are double hung, uh, low E. We'll see how they do.
So in the process of doing this renovation, I've come across multiple areas where um, the guys who, sorry about the wind, it's a little windy today. The guys who originally built this addition on um, kind of did a little bit of shoddy work. But both of these corners, I had to, uh, I'm having to beef up. Um, they didn't finish the corner out, um, which I don't really understand. Might as well have done it. It would have strengthened the corner. I mean, a corner is one of the places where you need to be the strongest uh, to support the load from your roof. Um, but they <clears throat> also, because they didn't do this, Let's see if I can see if you can see this. Um, but that's a if you can see that that's a pretty good gap that has opened up. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it, it moves moves pretty easy. Um, so because they didn't beef up this corner, they left this inset in here, which is a two by four plus half inch. So that's what I'm gonna scab in there is a, a two by four and uh, some blocks made out of half inch plywood. That'll go the whole way, um, all the way up to the top. So that'll add strength uh, supporting this corner. Plus it gives a nailer out here on the outside edge. Plus it just adds beef to the, the structure, um, more stuff to nail to. Um, this obviously here, flopping in the wind it's hardly nailed to anything um, I don't think it's even this board out here let me look I don't think there's a single nail in this to this outside there's a few on the, the inside which would be this which is really only no, that's not right either to this. Yeah, anyway, finding some kind of shoddy work that I'm going to have to beef up. So that's kind of what I'm doing in a few different places. camera or not but I pulled it up just nailing it beating it over I pulled it up to tight pretty well all the way down there's still a little gap down there at the bottom but I think there's something behind that's kind of holding it out it's still flush with my plate bottom plate down there It'd be a lot better So I got all four of these done out here on this outside. Those three. So one, two, three. These four, seven. These two will be the last two. And then my one up here makes ten. I still got a little bit of work to do. I need to uh, frame all these in. So I can trim it out and then insulate behind it. Um, similar to what I did over here. I got to do those. 
and then I will need to sheet the outside. Another thing I'm going to have to do, um, all this decking is eventually going to come up. I'm going to put subfloor down, put the dip, probably flip the decking over, clean it up, put the decking back down as a flooring in here. Um, not 100% sure that's what I'm going to do, but to save wood lumber right now is just unbelievably expensive. So I'm going to try to reuse and repurpose everything that I can. This is all going to be sheeted and closed in, but because this is all out in the weather and this bottom plate is just sitting on top of the decking, water could actually hit the deck and run underneath there. So I initially thought, well, I'll just caulk along the edge there, but that's like a temporary fix in my opinion. Caulking is like a temporary thing. I don't, I don't like to do it permanent. So I think what I'm going to do, which is the hard thing to do is I'm actually going to cut back every one of these boards and um pull them out so i will probably put the sheeting i'll probably pull the deck board out all of them out which is going to be a process because every one of these i know it's screws which is easier than nails but i've already tried to pull some of these out and they, they're rusted up and they break off so it's a it's a battle it's not as simple as it might seem and then i'll cut every bit of this back i'll pull the decking back i'll put the sheeting on then I will put flashing on the sheeting. Now I actually probably have to put another joist nailer across. So when I put the deck back, there's actually something to nail to because it's right there at the edge. This one here I cut back yesterday just to experiment. Let me grab the whole end of the board here so you can see. So basically, you can see that there is a little bit left of the rim board or the joist. So I'll probably have to put another, I'll have to sister another board there. So when I put these back, there'll be something to nail to. But I'll put the sheeting and then I'll put flashing. So any water that does. And then I'll put, um, I've got some black paper, some tar paper, some uh, water protection. Put that over the top of the flashing. So if water does get back to the tar paper, it will run down, hit the flashing, and run out, and then drip down onto the ground below the deck. That will protect water from getting in. I'm going to have to do that actually all the way around. So, still got a lot to do. Framing is uh, not far from being done. Those two windows over there, and then up here, but then i got to work on the decking, and then... Thinking about doing spraying insulation up here in the inside of the rafters and probably behind the sheeting all the way around and then I'll sheet the areas up here in this where the window isn't and I'll spray foam that too. So tomorrow maybe I can work on that. It's supposed to rain but we'll get some stuff done. Maybe we'll call this part one. Thanks for watching guys, end of part one, remember uh, measure twice, cut once, and I'll see you on the next one, part two.